Good morning, guys. Dr. Mary from the Remedy Room. I want to encourage you to come down and meet my staff. If you have questions, they're all adept at answering these questions because these are the things that I teach them when we have our weekly meetings. I want to continue the conversation in regards to coronary artery disease because it is totally preventable and we can um, do so many things by changing our diet and by exercising. But let's just focus on the diet. And then today what I want to focus on is some of the labs and values that you should be more concerned with than just your total cholesterol, okay? So heart attack and stroke, totally preventable with the diet. If you look way down below, if we reduce the total sugars that we take in, therefore reducing inflammation, reducing infection, reducing that plaque development and that injury to the vessel wall we spoke of yesterday, then you're going to reduce your triglycerides and increase your HDL, which is gonna lower your ratio and your risk of heart attack and stroke. The next thing that doctors are now starting to look at is the CRP. This stands for C-reactive protein. This protein elevates when there's inflammation and definitely infection in your body. So if you have a high number above one, even at two, we like it under one, but even at two, we notice that normal, L, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Normal LDLs with people on statins. So careful, you're not safe. Just because you're on statin doesn't mean you're in the clear. Normal LDLs, but they had elevated CRP, they had heart attacks. So again, it's not about the cholesterol, y'all. That's just one marker. It's going in to repair the plaque and it's really getting all the blame and it's not what we need to focus on. So CRP, how do you lower that? You lose weight, you stop smoking, you reduce your blood pressure, you reduce the things that cause inflammation, and back to what we said yesterday, you reduce the bacteria that's in the mouth, you start to look for insidious infections in there. If you've had any dental work, you might consider getting a cone beam scan of your mouth to look and see for any kind of infections. The next thing is homocysteine. Your doctors will know about this too. This is also a very big marker and lets us know at how much risk you are to have a heart attack or stroke. We like our numbers between five to eight. If it's elevated, you do need to pay attention to this. And one of the big things you can do is add some methylated B vitamins and that will help to lower it. But more importantly, change your diet, start exercising. The next two tests I'd like to talk about are the carotid ultrasound and the coronary calcium score. Unfortunately, the coronary calcium score, which will tell us how many coronary calcified plaques we have in those vessels, it's really uh, informative, it is not covered by insurance. I think it's about $100. The problem is, is that it checks for hard plaques, but it doesn't really give us a good uh, guesstimate of the soft plaques. And as you know, it's not just that the calcification is just getting bigger and bigger and blocking the vessel, it's that the soft plaque breaks off and when it breaks off there's a clot formation all right and so there's this cascade of inflammatory problems and, and clots that develop and then that's what blocks the vessel and stops your heart or your brain from getting blood can't live without oxygen so that's where the problem begins so these two tests i would say of the ones that you can probably get with your doctor and they will be ordering on you will be the carotid ultrasound and that will tell you about your soft and your hard plaques and give you a good guesstimate so my problem is not that I hate all statins, but I hate what they're doing is they're focusing on the thing that is really your repair mechanism. And when we drop cholesterol, which is our ability to make, um, to heal the vessel, but also to make sex hormones and to repair, when we reduce testosterone, we know that low testosterone puts men at risk for coronary artery disease. Here's why. So in this effort to try to help people with their heart, we're creating dementia. Our brains are made of fat, and so stripping away all the fat is not the answer. Changing the diet and actually eating healthy fats, such as olive oil, macadamia nuts, even animal fats, if they are organic and if they're grass-fed, and they're the way that the animals were supposed to live, like a cow eating grass instead of corn. So remember, we don't make pate and fatten that goose by opening its gullet and shoving fat and lard down its throat. How do we get that pate? How do we make that liver fat? We pour grain, we pour sugar. So sugar is what makes us fat. Carbohydrates, excess consumption is what is keeping us big. It is what is causing fatty liver and causing all that deposition. It's not fat. Fat does not make you fat. Now, 
not saturated fat. We cannot have hydrogenated oils. That means no more French fries. You cannot fry these things. You're damaging and causing <laughs> major inflammation inside the vessels. So what am I gonna eat? Well, you're gonna go back to the earth. Go on the outside aisles of the grocery store, mostly vegetables, proteins from meat, fish, chicken, again, raised in its natural state. And so, yes, you're right, organic food is expensive, but so is being sick and having limb by limb be taken off from diabetes. These things are totally preventable. And if you wear a seatbelt, then you care about your life. You care about prevention. So for me, if it's as easy as just changing what I eat and starting to fast, this is why we're pushing the fasting and we're pushing this lower carb intake. Every study, I don't care if you pick paleo, Mediterranean, keto, okay, they're all on the same side of the street, which is reducing the sugar and reducing the global picture of inflammation. Share this if you have someone who might need it. Please like this page and um, keep on trying, guys. We're here to educate.